on the Sagamon County Circuit Park website. So um, I grabbed my computer out of the car and I showed it to both of them to show them that it was a real order and it did really exist. How did they react? Um, in disbelief, they were, they were upset um, that uh, Gartavius had gone behind her back to get the order um, and that nobody had told them about it. Um, I explained to them that the copy that I was giving them actually was the copy that should have probably already been served. Did either, either of them inquire if they had to follow that order? Yes. And who inquired? Um, Mr. Byers um, asked if they even needed to follow the order. How did you respond? I explained to them that it, it's a lawful order from the court. Um, if they don't follow the order, then um, Swanka, since the order involves her, could be arrested, which would just be a notice to appear. And I explained that she wouldn't be booked into the jail or anything, but she could be arrested and have a court date set for unlawful visitation repairs. And how did the defendant respond about Twanica potentially getting a criminal charge? She seemed, she was quiet, seemed a little concerned. Um, he, he responded that they're not worried about her catching a case because they have money to hire a lawyer to fight the case. The defendant said they had the money? Yes. Um, how did you respond when the defendant said he's not concerned about her taking a criminal charge? I, I tried to encourage cooler heads to prevail. Um, I, I stress that although it's frustrating to hear about all this right now, um, we need to think more long term. And the judge that issued this temporary order might be the same one that decides the permanent visitation order and might not care or like the order being disregarded and his orders being disobeyed. And how did they react at that point? Um, more frustration. Um, Twanda um, still was pretty quiet, um, but basically said that it wasn't fair. Um, Mr. Myers got upset, started yelling curse words and threats, and uh, called Dartavius a coward and a bitch. And when he called uh, Dartavius a coward and a bitch, what did Dartavius do? He immediately opened up the car door and jumped out of the car door, and this a back and forth barrage of profanity and racial slurs and curse words um, ensued with explicit threats of violence back and forth from both of them um, and implied threats um, insults you name it I mean there's there's too many N words and F words to, to even accurately try to estimate what did you, um, an officer, Gilbert, do to try to defuse this? We tried to get both of them to stop. Um, that was a futile effort. Um, we directed more of our attention to Dartavius and ordered him to get back inside the vehicle. Um, he initially disobeyed those orders and ended up, um, as we stood on the sidewalk, between the front porch, step, the front porch stoop where um, Anthony was, and Dortavius had now moved from the vehicle to the public sidewalk. Um, at one point, Dortavius even acted like he was going to just walk right through us to try to get to Anthony. Where um, were Twanica and Tanasia when the defendant and Dortavius were yelling at each other? Um, Twanica was standing in the threshold of the doorway still um, from the front door of the house. Um, Tanasia had already been set down and was sitting on the floor a little bit. Um, behind Swanica. How were they behaving? Um, Swanica would argue a little bit when she heard, I guess, something she didn't like, but um, she wasn't she wasn't vulgar and calling names. Um, she was mostly quiet, really. And um, Tanasia was very attentive. Um, she was watching everybody. She said nothing and did nothing. She just kind of watched it all unfold. While the yelling was going on, uh, what, if anything, did the defendant say to Dartavius about parenting Tanasia? He, he said that, uh, that Dartavius was a deadbeat. Um, he said that um, he cares about Tanasia and he takes care of her just like, he, just like she's his own daughter. Um, and he emphasized, I'm the one to provide for her. I'm the one to care for her.
Eventually, did Artavius get back in his car? Yes, after much more yelling and insults and all that, um, he finally listened to us when we were back in his car. And then after he was back in his car, what happened? Um, when he was back in his car, we proceeded to um, try to discuss with Kalanika and, and Anthony, again, trying to encourage cooperation with the order, compliance with the order. It became apparent at that point um, from Gortavius' statements that he wasn't planning on leaving unless he got visitation. We didn't feel at that point that if we that we could safely leave without something else happening between these two opposing groups. So we continued to encourage them to cooperate with the order, and um, instead of instead of asking yes or no, will you do this? I started trying to almost negotiate the terms of our how can we figure out the logistics of this? What could make this a little bit easier when it comes to how we're going to facilitate the visitation, how we're going to get Tanisha back at the end of the visitation, things like that. Who, if anyone, ultimately agreed to comply with the order first? Um, Tawanka, um, reluctantly, I mean, she was hesitant, but her concern was getting Tanisha back, and um, she eventually agreed to go ahead with the visitation order. She did express concern about the judge holding it against her. She did. And once Twan once Twanica agreed to it, how did the defendant react? Um, he, he was not okay with it, and um, expressed to her that she should not agree to this and should not allow the visitation. Ultimately, did everybody agree to the visitation? Um, yes. We, we worked out, hammered out more of the logistics for how Tanisha would be returned back home and all that. Um, Tawanika had even um, agreed to make up a diaper bag with some provisions for, to send off with Tanisha for the visit. Um, but she didn't actually grab any of those things until Anthony gave his approval, basically, and said that he was fine with it. Who um, initially tried to take Tanisha over to the Dartavius' car? So the whole time that this was going on, um, Tanisha was sitting on the floor. When Tawanda made up the diaper bag, she bundled her up because it's December. Um, this is the, this was the first time that um, Anthony turned his attention away from Bartavius that was alternately on the street and in the vehicle. Um, and he expressed that if he's going to get his visit, then he'll take Tanisha over to Cartagena's. He picked her up. What did you do? I, I didn't feel like I was safe at all. I was afraid that they were going to fight with her right in the middle of them. And I told him I think that this is a bad idea. And I proposed that he allow me to walk to Tanisha. Um, down that front walkway and hand her over to Tartavius. And did he agree? Yeah, it, it, it didn't take very much convincing. He handed her over to me um, and she immediately latched on to me. How did she behave while you carried her to the car? She was very calm and just um, kind of studied me and looked at me and just held me very tight. She seemed to be bothered by the conflict? No. Um, she was kind of the calm in the middle of the sword. She, she seemed like she wasn't very affected by it. She, she didn't seem like she was holding on to me tightly because she was afraid. She just held on to me tightly. Had you ever met her before that? No. I hadn't met any at that time. Did uh, Tanisha cry when you took her from her mom and from the defendant? No. Did the defendant or Tawanika tell her goodbye? No. Did the defendant or Tawanika appear to be sad or emotional when he took Tanisha from them? They didn't give any hugs or do anything like that. They didn't say goodbye. They didn't appear to be sad or emotional. They, they still appeared angry with their kids. That's all. Did you assist in buckling Tanisha in her car seat? Yeah, um, Anthony openly expressed his, uh, um, his he, he expressed that um, Bartavius probably couldn't buckle her in correctly, which of course made Bartavius mad. 
Um, I stated that I was going to help buckle her into her car seat just to make sure that everything was safe and strapped in correctly. How did Tanisha act when you buckled her into her car seat? Um, she was docile and she didn't struggle and he, she wasn't fussy or anything. Um, whenever I was adjusting the, the front straps and everything, she kept trying to like grab and touch on me. Or she was just uh, kind of watching me and studying me, I guess. Um, did either you or Dartavius notice anything on her cheek at that point? Yeah, there's a, um, a little bit smaller than the size of a pea, maybe. Um, tiny little, like, bruise that looked like maybe, or discoloration on her skin. Um, very small, didn't appear swollen or anything like that, but um, I noticed it. While I was, you know, adjusting the straps, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching in, she's in the back seat, I'm reaching in on this side, which is next to me inside the vehicle on the other side, and I'm kind of messing with the straps too. And uh, I saw the bruise, um, and I, I pointed it out to him, um, just so that he'd be aware of it. And he asked me to um, document that that bruise, and he said kind of in a hushed tone, to document that that bruise existed because he didn't want to be blamed for it. He didn't want to be accused of anything. What did he ask you to do at that point? Well, he said... Sir, Your Honor, you're safe. Where are we going with this, Mr. Brown? I understand the point of this testimony. 